Go back to the magic pliers. Just tighten that up. You don't need to go crazy in that button is only brass. If you overdo it, you'll shear the end off it. And you'll be looking for another one. Worse than that, you've got to get the stub out of the base of the shaft. Alright, so that part's all done. Just looking at the base, seeing what I need to do here. I've got to tension this one full turn before I put the base cover on here. One full turn from here. So it's there. Now the spring that held our capping plate in place, that needs to go in. And this is a shortened base plate that I've made on a previous occasion from a uh, the base plate taken from a scrap camera. I'll hold this in place with three screws, or two will probably do. That'll do. And I can put the film advance lever in place and that will mean that nothing will unwind, that the film advance shaft will retain its tension. At first I suppose I better clean up this lever. It's a bit dirty and it's certainly covered in a lot of adhesive there, which tells me that this has been off previously, if nothing else. I'm fairly sure the shutter's never been serviced. Somebody must have done something to the film advance in this camera at some stage. Let me clean that up and I'll come back. Right, well with that lever somewhat tidied up, and pop the screws back in it. You don't need to put the whole three back in at this stage. Two will hold it more than adequately. Let's see what we've got. So depressing the release lever at the front here, holding down the lock lever at the back here with my finger. I can move the film advance lever. It moves smoothly, returns nicely, everything's good. The film advance at the bottom of the camera is done. And at the top of the camera, we can start putting the top of the camera together. First off, I need to find the chrome trim. Where is it and what state's it in? Well, here it is. It's a little bit grimy, but not too bad. I'll just give that a quick uh, clean with some naphtha and pop that in place. Well, that looks fine. Let's drop that into position. At this end, we've got the strap lug. I'll pop that in position. It's two screws. Now the screw holes in that strap lug are slightly slotted to allow you to adjust the position of the strap lug inwards or outwards. Outwards is the right way. Push it outwards against the screws, do them up tight, you won't go far wrong. Here. Right, there's not much we need to put on here at the moment. I've got my cocking rack. The cocking rack here you'll notice is a dull colour. It suggests to me that it's a hardened rack. 
Now the hardened racks were not a common feature on the Retina 3, the Retina Reflex S, they were on the Retina th Reflex 3. But interestingly, the early Retina Reflex 3s, they were not hardened. They were mild and they were nickel plated. This looks like a hardened rack to me, but it's certainly a rack for a Reflex S. And I don't know what that suggests, knowing that the later cameras did not have a hardened rack. Was this a replacement part, or was it an experiment? It may well be it was an experiment that they later put in place when they were making the Reflex 3. What parts do I need for this? Well, there's a bush here, which looks very much like these cupped washers, but isn't. It's thick and it's quite solid. We have the hold down plate here, and we have the strap lug at this end. So I'll find the screws for these components, lubricate the rack and put all this in place. I'll start with the rack, I'll just wipe a bit of synthetic grease on that, making sure I get it into the teeth of the gear and on the underside. And the teeth here, drop that in position, it should just have the first tooth engaged. We can put the bush in position. And the strap lug can go on. Now the screw, the countersunk head screw that runs through the strap lug and through that bush has a plain shank on it at the top. I'll put a smear of grease on that plain shank. but not on the threads. Get this thing in position. It's never been clear to me whether that uh, bush ever revolves. I don't think it does. Plain screw here at the end. That's the sounds of summer out there, people mowing lawns and running their weed eaters. This clamp down plate has a little bearing on it. I'm just forcing a bit of grease into that bearing. Two screws. Draw a headed screw there. The longer of the two screws here. Do those screws down tight. Check they're all done. Now the film advance should move the cocking rack. Should move through its full range and there's no sign of any stiffness there. That all looks good. What do I want to do next? Rewind shaft on there and its bush. Two screws will hold that in position. And we've got this support post too. The earlier retinas had a uh, two-piece rewind shaft. You could lift it up 
to make it easier to do rewind the film. These later retinas did not have that facility. So if you lift the rewind knob up, it'll come out of the cassette completely. And it's not a joy for rewinding the film. And that first screw down. Second one down, both in place, and tighten them up. This support for the top cover can go on there. It really only needs to be finger tight. If you go crazy on that, you'll end up sh snapping it off at the bottom. That's looking good. I've got to put the meter on the top of the body, the mirror back in, the spring on here, fit a bracket at this point that'll hold the spring for the uh, transfer shaft cam and this, of course, would hardly move before because it was sticky with grease. I'm looking at the state of it now. It's all nice and clean and pretty. Just like a bought one. It's fun to install. That's next. Since I'll shortly be putting the meter in the camera, I'll be covering the Film Advance components up here. And this is my last chance to do anything I want to do. Yes, yeah, so I'm just putting a touch of lacquer in the notch in that screw head. Just to encourage that screw not to work its way loose. Not that that's a significant problem. Very rarely would I see the screw loose in that position. Make sure none of that gets down into the teeth of that gear. That's fine. And Likewise, I'll put a touch of grease there because I'm not coming back into that part. I'll just run it in here, which will lubricate the teeth of those gears, and it'll also lubricate this surface so that it'll run under the dog there smoothly. That's good. Our shutter release button runs through the gap in the body at that point. So I've just run a little bit of uh, molybdenum and paste down there, just to give it a wipe. And our shutter release shaft with its return spring. There are two springs that look much the same. The shorter of the two screws, return springs, goes on the shutter release. The shutter release has a notch on one face which runs against that post. The film release button, this piece, again I run some molybdenum paste to give it a wipe on the inside, put its spring in place, that sits over its post right there. And the meter hooks into position. And it's got a little locating pin on the base foot, which is often actually snapped off. In this case it's present, which just locates it firmly in the top of the body casting. At that stage it's ready to have the cord and everything fitted to it. And this is where it gets entertaining. 
I've got my replacement cord here. This was uh, some very, very fine braided fishing line, I believe. I was given, to, given it by one of my friends decades ago. It's one of those super duper man-made fibre. Can't be broken by anything types of fibres. Yeah, but it's, it's a woven thing. It's not as fine as the original by any means. Doesn't run as well over the pulleys as the original by any means. But then again, the original is uh, no longer available. So it has to do. I'll just pop that back in place. I was just busy knocking that over while I was talking. And all of this has to be carefully put into place. Now, someone's going to ask me, what's the dimension for that cord? And in the Retina 3S service manual, it says here that the meter cord hooker cord length 18 and a quarter inches between knots, which is 464 millimeters. And of course, this has to be run around the drum rooted through the camera, over the pulleys and so forth all at the, uh, in the correct directions and the correct orientation always fun right let's start wrapping this cord so taking that round the drum once twice the upper Make sure that runs at the top. Here. The upper portion. Goes to the top pulley. And it goes to the rearmost pulley here. The one closest to the centre line of the camera. So I drop that down through the body. It sits over that post. And the lower one goes to the lower roller here. And it goes to the front pulley. And I'll pull that down through the body. If I hold some tension on those, those cords should sit in place. Of course that one's already falling out of position. Just like that. Now to hold them there while I'm working and getting the rest of it in position, I'm just going to clamp them lightly at this point between a couple of washers with a screw. So I need to know which cord is which, not get a twist in this because otherwise I will get muddled up. And the front cord is here and I'm going to Put a washer there, another washer, those are heavy duty washers, they're thick, fairly thick washers, they um, work nicely for this purpose, but any sort of washer would do, just run that screw down lightly. Right, so the front cord I'm going to put around the back of that washer, and the rear cord I'll leave on here on this side of the washer and I'll just nip that screw up very lightly indeed so I've got the cord trapped between the two washers if you do that up tight you'll cut your cord or damage it and you won't like the result because you've got to start all over again okay so that's our cord loose, loosely in place at the top of the meter and now I've got to get it wrapped around the pulleys here and the drum, tension the pulleys at this point and then finish it up.
Well, I better carry on the good fight with this uh, meter cord. Just put a little bit of synthetic grease on that drum. Okay, so the cord I've got here is the one at the back. So I'll put that on the back pulley. This cord is the one that goes on the front pulley. Looking at my diagram, the one on the front pulley goes to the bottom of the drum and around. So I'll get that on there first. And of course the other cord goes onto the top of the pulley. Let's see if I can get that in position. Like that. Make that back on the drum. Need another turn. As usual, it's playing hard to get. That has come off the drum. That's better. Now I've got it too tight. Drop a turn off there. No, nope, I'm going to turn out here somewhere. Let me get this wrapped around there once more. To the back. To the front. Get that over the post. No, something is not right. Oh, I've got both my cords starting in the same slot. Back where we were. What an idiot. Okay. At the bottom of the drum. That's the front one, goes to the bottom of the drum. back one goes to the top of the drum. There's cords sitting in place correctly on this. Pulley, and we should be in business. That goes to the bottom. To the back, that goes to the front. That's not sitting over the pulley correctly, that's better. Just 
tension that spring. Remove my screw and washers from the top here. Check the lie of that cord, making sure it's running smoothly over the pulleys in the correct directions. That looks okay. I turn the meter drummer from the top. It's certainly running okay. Want to manoeuvre the cord so that it winds up smoothly on the drum. I'll start with the bottom one. Make sure that the knot is pressed right to the back so that the cord winds up smoothly from there. Just press that down there, that's good. The one at the front, the cord is not running where I would like it to run. Let's make sure the cord is all the way forward on the drum. Hit the knot. And then as it revolves around, it'll wind around towards the centre of the drum. Which it is. Now a knot has um, escaped from the slot there. That's all coming undone. I'm going to have, to have another go at this. And I don't want to disturb these cords if I can help it, so I'll put my washers and screw back in place here. One of those knots must not have been big enough to stay in the slot, I think. I did say that this was a bit of a bugger of a job on a good day. cords back where they were. That's it. Lift that up lightly. That's just to stop the cords becoming loose at the top here. That's enough trouble trying to deal with one end at a time here without having to deal with both. Well, those knots look like they should have stayed in place. Right. This is the one that should be at the back. This is the one that should be at the front. Let's try again.
All right, I've just got to make sure I haven't got these cords tangled up. No, that's looking good. It's even revolving smoothly. Now with the drum in this position, the slot and that running roughly towards 11 o'clock, this position should be somewhere about there. That's close enough anyway to start with. That looks good. I'm quite pleased with that. I'll have a closer look at that because I want to be sure that those knots are not going to come loose. that looks fine. The cord's not too tight, it's not too loose, it's being tensioned by the spring here on the pulley. I think that's fine. Carry on. Well, what shall I do first? Oh, oh yes, I've got to put the bracket in there to hold my um, spring on the transfer shaft. 